Okay, so I'm sorry guys, I had to start the broadcast over again. I was having some technical difficulties, but um, I'm hoping you guys will chime back in. I have like 10 to 12 minutes now. It was, it was 10 to 13, but now I'm at 10 to 12. And I just wanted to talk to you guys real quick this morning. Um, uh, there's a couple things that have just been in my on my heart and in my mind as I've been experiencing some things. Good morning, Hope. Um, if you would invite somebody to this, because I feel like this is truly going to be a word that's going to bless the people. Um, but I just want to shout out real quick my sister, my sister Juanita Stringer. She is my sister. Um, we have a ministry, which is Who Art Thou, My Daughter Ministry. Um, we met many of you guys through the ministry, and God is doing a mighty work. There's so much going on. There's so much that he is setting us up for, so many things that he is putting in alignment, and we are just walking according to his plan. You know, there's many devices of the human mind. Um, we can make up our own plans, but God truly is the one who orders our steps and aligns our steps. And so I just want to shout her out. I love you, my sister. You are such a mighty woman of God. I'm always watching. I'm always connected. I, I tell you, you literally, God has sent you into my life for um, a time such as this. It has been an amazing seven years of wonderful friendship and um, great ministry and great advancement of the kingdom. And that, more than anything, I praise God for the advancement in the kingdom. Them. But I wanted to talk to you guys real quick. There is this show. Um, it might be a little conflictory or it might be, um, I don't know. I don't even know the word I'm trying to use, but um, there's this show that I watched um, and it's called The Center. And I generally don't watch TV. Um, I really don't have a lot of time uh, to watch TV, but there was some reason why I kept watching this show. And I just want to... Um, let you know there was a, there was an event that happened with this woman um if you have not watched it um where she basically blanked out she she did something really bad and they didn't understand why she did it cuz it was completely um not her character she was just this wife a mother you know this hometown girl and what she did was totally out of character it didn't make any sense and somebody took the time to say wait I don't think that this woman did this horrific crime um, in, in her own merit. Something happened. Something happened as to why she did this. And the show made me watch how sometimes things will happen in our lives that we dig so deep that we think we're moved past it. We think that we have moved on from it. And then all of a sudden, it creeps up into our lives. There were instances, again, in this show, I'm going to get to the word real quick, but there was instances in this show where she was in love with her husband. Like her, She was in love with her husband and she loved her child and and she would never do anything to hurt him or anything in front of him um, that would harm him. And she would have these moments where she would glitch. Like she would um, either get really strong, like she would be hugging them and then all of a sudden she'd tense up and her husband would be looking at her like, what's the matter? And it was because there was some things of old, there was some things from the past that she had dug so deep that she literally forgot them. They were not even in her memory. She had no memory of what had happened. Um, and sometimes these things can happen in our lives Lives where we start moving forward in ministry. This morning, I'm going to talk to the to the believer who has turned. And the reason because the reason I want to talk to you is because sometimes we feel like we get in these places where things can't happen in our lives. That we there's no area that God is still unveiling and revealing in us that He still wants to deal with. We're like, oh, I'm in full time ministry, or not to say full time ministry, but I'm moving forward and what God has purposed for me to do, and I'm moving. I'm you know I'm on course. I've turned from my ways. I've you know I've surrendered my life totally to Him, and now I'm moving forward. And then all of a sudden, like little glitches start showing up. Like little, little things start showing up, little thoughts start coming up and stirring up and you're like, what's that all about? And sometimes we'll ignore it. And the thing that we want to do is to not ignore it because those things are rooted in something. There's something that God wants to show you that he still wants to deal with. And I've said this, um, even in my book. I wrote in my book how um, I thought that I was past a whole lot of stuff until I started getting introduced to my promises. Um, that's really ultimately what what um, caused me to write even my book was because I was being introduced to another realm and another place that God was sending me that he had already known that he commissioned me to, that he had already promised me, but he told me that these things that I have yet to address or to let him address um, were still there. And so I just wanted to read um, a little bit real quick to you because I'm talking about the one, the believer who has already turned. You have given your life to God, but yet you still know that there's something that keeps coming up up. 
and you keep suppressing it. You keep um, saying, no, you know, if you, I'm just going to be frank about it. If you, you, the Bible talks about um, praises and worship can't come out of the same mouth that speaks um curses, you know, that, that speaks derogatory language. Sometimes you, you find yourself getting caught up. You about to cuss somebody out and it's like, wait a minute, where, where is that stemming from? You know what I mean? Or you have a thought, um, you've been celibate for a long time. You've been walking according to God's um, ordinance on your life. You've been giving him that reasonable service. And then all of a sudden your thoughts keep carrying you into a place of, of lust and perversion. And you're like, what is that about? Don't ignore those things because God wants to show you something. And so I'm not speaking to the one that's still wondering and concerned about leaving the sinful nature because we already know it's, it's not, it's simply said, but we know that the submission, the submission is simple. It really is. It's just getting your mind to believe that if I just turn from it, I'm not going to lose my life. <laughs> I'm not going to lose my whole identity and self. Yeah, you're going to lose your identity and self in sin, but you're going to find out exactly who God has called you to be. You're going to reintroduce yourself to yourself. And so... I'm not talking to the one that knows that you know you're in sin. You know what your struggles are. Um, and so it's literally surrendering and turning. That, that's my, that is the equation. Surrendering and turning. I'm talking to the believer this morning. I'm going to be quick. Um, the one that's still struggling with, I thought I was delivered from this. I thought that this, this time and this season was completely over in my life. I thought that I was completely cleansed from this, that the iniquity is done with, that the sin nature is gone. Can I tell you sometimes there is, um, when, when we know the Bible says whom the sun sets free is free indeed. That's when you surrendered and let him into that area. He wipes it clean. There is no trace. There is no residue, but when you did it yourself, Listen, when you did it yourself, that's just like dry cleaning clothes. When I send it to the dry cleaner, that thing come back, what they say, fried, dilated to the side about your hair. But that thing come back nice and laid. I could throw it on. But when I tried to dry clean that thing myself, it the stain might have come out initially. But then as I wore it and it got wet or something, the stain ends up coming back because I tried to do it myself. If you let the Lord do it, um, and you will be free indeed. But I want to just read to you um, 2 Corinthians 1. 3 through 11. I'm just going to give you some tidbits from there. But Paul is talking about they were, he and Timothy were facing some areas of distress. You know, they were out preaching and teaching the gospel and it was getting bad. They were like, my life, we felt like we were about to die. That's ultimately what they were saying. And it's like, well, wait, why am I being faced with such levels of oppression and, um, and, 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 uh, affliction and, and why am I being faced with these things? I done turned. I done li live my life for Christ. Yes. You will suffer with him as well. But the beauty of it is Paul keeps reminding them that yes, you have seen us suffer, but the comfort, God says he's going to, he's going to give us all comfort in the suffering, all comfort in the afflictions. So don't be concerned about the things that you are facing. Don't be concerned about even the areas that God is still speaking to you that he wants to address. Don't run from it. The best thing that you can do is just let them patch it down. Like my sister Juanita says, have a pat down. Let, let, let God pat you down. And sometimes we're afraid of what he's going to say, but we do you know he already knows? And how about this? Do you know that you already know? You literally know. You might not know the exact root of it, but he wants to expose it. God wants to expose it to us so that we can say, oh, uh-uh, I don't like that part. Please, Lord, take it away. And he will take it. He will take it. Sometimes we have to come out of agreement with the things that we have invited in. There were things that happened over the years that we invited in, guys. It's And, and don't beat yourself up about it. It is not unto condemnation. It is unto liberty. Like I said, Isaiah 61, that is the call and commission that we are called to. Um, and that is to, I'm going to read it to you. I'm just going to read real quick so I'm going to get off of here. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because... That word because is crucial because sometimes we can just, um, pride can set in, haughtiness can set in. Oh yes, I'm walking in my anointing. I'm walking in my call, but there's a reason why this has really nothing to do with you. You are a willing vessel. You as a believer, you have surrendered. You have the ability to allow God to utilize everything that he put inside of you. So it's really not about you. So the anointing and the spirit of the Lord being upon you has really nothing to do. You didn't earn this. 
Amen. You merely surrendered and allowed him to come in in his fullness. And now he wants to use you. So let's get past that. That's the reason why I'm anointed. That's a reason why I'm called unto this. It's because he has a work that he wants to do through me. He has chosen to do the work in this earthly realm through man. That is God's choice. And so he's anointed me because he wants me to preach good news to the poor. And he wants me to preach good news to the hurt and afflicted. There's nothing like someone always saying to you, bad, 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 bad. Yes, listen, again, there may be words of um of correction. There may be words that, that God will send somebody to tell you your slip is hanging. But the thing is, they're telling you something that you kind of were aware of. You knew that slip kept falling in the morning when you put it on. You knew that there was a potential that it could fall and slip out and that you could be exposed. There's nothing that you don't know. It is always confirmation when God sends someone to give a word of correction to you. It is not something that you're oblivious to. Amen. And so I just want to, I want you to know that sometimes, um, we, we, you know, if, if you always have a word of damnation and a word of, um, of, um, uh, of condemnation, listen, nobody who's desiring to serve a God like that. That is not the, that is not the image of Jesus Christ. Yes, he corrects. Yes, he speaks truth. Yes, he gave it to us unadulterated, but he came in love. He was like, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. I did not come to condemn the world, but that I would save the world. Amen. And so that's what he's sending us to do. He's, t he's sending us to preach the good news, the truth of who Jesus Christ is, that he's the lover of your soul. He's the one who came from heaven in order that you might live, that you would have life. That's what he came for. He came to those who despised and rejected him, but still had words of love for them, asking them, pleading with them to turn and to, and to see that he was the savior of the world. Hello, somebody. Oh God. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has called me to declare freedom. I'm declaring freedom. It is it is liberation in Jesus Christ. It is not bondage in Jesus Christ. So many think that to live a life for God, like it's it's almost limiting you to, to the blessings and, and the things of the world. Yeah, right. You actually will live in abundance. Hello, somebody. So I'm here to declare that you will live in abundance and freedom and liberty, not held back, not constricted. What you might be looking at and you might be weighing is the religiousness that has crept, unfortunately, into the body of Christ. But don't focus on the religion because there is freedom. There is liberty in Jesus Christ. You are not bound and captive in Jesus Christ. He has put the spirit of the Lord God upon me because he desires that we would take authority and bind up the forces that that come against your heart, that come against your mind, that come against your very nature and being of who God always created you to be. He wants us to bind that up and he wants us to speak excuse me, he wants us to speak to the mending of your heart. He wants us to, to, to declare that you will, uh, that you will love again, that you will live again, that you will forgive again, that you will be healed again. Listen, many of our healings are in the place of the heart. It's not even ne necessarily a natural healing that most of us need. Most of us need a mending of the heart. That heart was bruised. That heart was hurt. There was things, areas of rejection, the spirit of rejection, the spirit of abandonment. God says, no, I'm sending forth those who have surrendered to me, who know me, who will allow me to use them because that's all God is doing. God is using us to speak a word over your life. God is using us to speak his word. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit brings all things back to your remembrance. You might have a great memory, but I don't know about you, but there's a, there's some times when the Lord will bring back a word that I have. I don't even know when I read it. I don't even know when I came in contact with it, but he'll bring that word back up because he needed to go forth. His word is being sent. His word is being sent out to accomplish what he has sent it to do. It will not return to him void. And so we are mere vessels. And so when we're talking about the believer who is struggling with, am I delivered? Am I completely healed? Am I, listen, if you have those questions, just surrender, just surrender to what God wants to do because there is a work. The Bible says that Paul said in first Corinthians, uh, second Corinthians one, uh, three through 11, Paul said, these things came that I might be comforted so that I can then comfort you. Listen, what has happened and is still happening in your life. God is teaching you something because 
because those that he is sending us to will need the same level of comfort that we need. We'll need the same word. Have you ever found that you end up um, literally speaking the word to somebody about things that you've been through? Because the empathy and compassion behind what you speak is genuinely true. You can I always say this, listen, somebody, if I was on drugs and I was trying to get off of drugs, I might be able to hear the person that never has been on drugs, but I might not be able to feel the person that's never been on drugs. The person that was on drugs and got um, completely is, is now drug free and now is healed and delivered. When they give that word to me, I can feel the compassion of the heart because they've been there. It's time for us. That's why he says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. The blood of the lamb has already been shed. Hello, somebody. It's already applied if you just let him apply the blood to you. It's applied, but then your testimony is what's going to reach those who are after you. He's working all things for the good, right? Of them that love God and are called according to his person his purpose if you've been through some things you were called there's something that god has has allowed you to walk through because you're going to come in contact with those who are walking through what you've been through hello somebody so if there's still areas that god is working on in you that he's delivering you from you have to recognize that that process i just realized that the other day i said oh god I said, Lord, why do I feel like I have to say this like 20 times in order for it to resonate with somebody? He said, I'm working patience because the ones that I've sent you to, you're going to have to say it 20 times in order for them to get it. And so I can't have you meet the one that's broken hearted, that's heavy laden. And when you start giving it to her, she start asking you the same thing over and over again. You start getting frustrated and all of a sudden you break, you break the relationship. You break exactly what I'm doing. I'm mending and I'm and I'm molding and I'm shaping. And then all of a sudden you come creeping in with your lack of patience. So I'm going to teach you before you meet her how to be patient. Am I, and I hope that's making sense. But I'm going I'm to get off of here because I'm going to get myself into work. But I want you to hit the replay if you just coming on because I feel like we need to know that everything that is happening in our lives, even as believers, y'all, it is still working for the good. It is still working. We don't want to be in this place, like I said, the show that I watched, The Sinner, um, where she was just oblivious. She didn't know why she couldn't love on her husband the way she wanted to. She didn't, know, she didn't understand why she would snap at moments. And, and the thing that that we have to do is want to say, God, show me, show me why I can't love like I want to love. Show me why when I see this or I hear this music, I get, I get cringed. I feel, I feel something that is not right. Show me, don't just let it be there. Don't just cope with it. Amen. Listen, you guys stay connected with me. I love y'all so much. Um, I want to shout out real quick. This week, we have some stuff coming up that God is really doing. He's forming some alliances with some powerful sisters that are moving forward in God. Some sisters are coming together to do a Pass the Cast. And that Pass the Cast is coming up on Monday. That's going to be Monday starting at 8 o'clock. These sisters um, is Takesha Morris. She's a one dope woman. I don't know if y'all know about her, but her book is bananas. Her book, I think I read her book in one sitting when I was at the hairdresser. We got Elder K. Starks. When God Speaks, she has written numerous books, a lot of ebooks. Go out and check out um, Elder K. Starks. I tell you, you will not be disappointed. She's going to be on the Pass the Cast on Monday, again, starting at 8 o'clock. More information will be forthcoming. Then we have Miss Whitney Whitford, the new Miss Whitney Whit Wilford, excuse me, of Climbing Out. She's doing an amazing movement, connecting women with truth and just um, getting out there and having women really tell their testimony so that people can be set free. Amen. And then lastly, I'll also be on a prayer line um, with the women of St. John's Full Gospel. I'm excited about that. That's also going to be on Monday. So you'll see more information about that. But prayer, prayer, and prayer. Hope, listen, I am so, I'm amped up to be in alignment with those women. This, oh, I'm sorry. I will be on that, um, on that past the cast as well. I am totally stoked because alliance is key. It, we are one, uh, one body, one spirit, right? One baptism. Got different 
different gifts, got different delivery, but we're speaking the same word of truth. Our, our delivery might be different, but what comes out of our mouth should align with the word of God. There's one word. Amen. So you guys stay tuned and I love you guys so much. Shania, have a blessed day. Auntie April, have a blessed day. Hope, have a blessed day. And anybody I miss, you be blessed. Uh, Tarina, have a blessed day. I, I praise God. One Lord. Amen. That's it. One, one Lord. One word. So God bless you guys. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord.